So, uh, I became a dad recently. Yeah, thanks so much. Well, I mean, it was easy, but um, <laughs> for me, anyway. Um, I Stop trying to check Matt's maths. I'm going to turn this around. Oh, sorry, I'm not going to be upstaged by a square <laughs> and that thing that he drew. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, uh, so I want to talk about childbirth. You know, childbirth is uh, a wonderful opportunity for data collection. Um, <laughs> it, it, honestly, it is, because uh, when you go into labor, you get asked this question all the time. How long are your contractions? Everyone wants to know, the midwives and the doctors, uh, because the closer you are to giving birth, the longer your contractions become. So this is an important data collection task that you have. And in the old days, you might use pen and paper to keep track of it, and, you know, a clock on the wall or something. Uh, but these days, the modern pregnant nerd can use an app. Um, so I downloaded an app for my Android phone. Uh, apps are available for iPhone as well. Uh, if you've got a Windows phone, you can use it to scrape the numbers into a rock. Uh, I don't know what you people do. Um, and the way the app works is uh, there's just a big button on the screen, and when the contraction starts, you press the button, and when the contraction stops, you press the button again, and it just takes care of everything. It's amazing. Um, and, uh, and that's quite a nice job for Dad, because <laughs> uh, Mum's quite busy, uh, and she hasn't got time for your stupid fucking app. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so that was me. Um, <laughs> Is it happening now, darling? Because if you don't tell me, it doesn't work. Um, <laughs> so I... Uh, I'm helping. Uh, so I... Uh, <laughs> so I could see that Leanne's contractions were getting longer and longer, and so I thought, OK, we better call the hospital. I phoned them up and I said, um, my wife's contractions are 58 seconds long. Um, that's the average over the last half an hour, by the way. Um, <laughs> Uh, I can also give you the average over the last hour. If that, I mean, with this app, I can give you the average over any time period. Oh, you want me to come in? OK, great. I'll, I'll, I'll bring my wife. Um, so so we, drive, we drive to the hospital, we get there, um, and we've got this in our little room. We've got a pool there, because we're going to have a water birth. That's the plan. Uh, which is amazing, by the way. Uh, except the, the midwives hadn't filled the pool with water yet. Um, because... They didn't think she was close to giving birth, uh, even though her contractions were really long. And that's because they, there's another data point that they use, which is how predictable are the contractions? Like, are they all the same length, or are they all different lengths? And they felt that Leanne's contractions weren't regular enough. Um, the problem is, Leanne wanted to get in the pool. <laughs> like, right now. <laughs> so it was my job to persuade the midwives to fill it. Uh, unfortunately, the app that I'd downloaded uh, has a feature where you can extract the data and load it into Excel. <laughs> and uh, fortunately, I'd brought my laptop with me. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, so I was able to knock up a quick spreadsheet <laughs> and a graph. <laughs> Uh, to show the midwives uh, so that they could see what was going on. Um, and I can reproduce that for you now. So, um, uh, so we've got time of day along the bottom, length of contractions up the side in minutes and seconds, and this is the data that came out of the app. And so what's it? Oh, by the way, um, that's where I had to go and move the car, so we'll go with that. That can go. Um, so, but what you can see is that... Um, they're, they're not very predictable. They're quite spread out. But as time goes on, it gets more predictable. It's more bunched up there. And there's a wonderful thing you can do with Excel, which is you can track how that changes as a function of time. It's the standard deviation, basically. So I was able to create a sort of envelope of possible contra contraction lengths and then project that into the future. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I was able to say to the midwives, that, as you can see, there is a point in the future at which my wife's contractions become perfectly regular. <laughs> and that's at 2055. <laughs> and it's my working hypothesis <laughs> that that is the moment my child will be born. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> uh, so I said, look, I'll show you my working out. And at that point, they filled the pool. So uh, that's great. Um, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you that my daughter was born at 2054. <sighs> no, 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 it's all right, no, it's all right, because... Erebus, yes! Totally nailed it. OK, yeah, but uh, it is an unusual name for a first child. <laughs> We, we like it. Little errors, we call her. Um, <laughs> not really. She's called Lyra. There she is. <laughs> she already knows the best angle for a selfie. She's right there now, so, uh, so that's good. I'll show you one more picture. Um, this, is, uh, this is when we discovered she's too young for Doctor Who. So uh, there, is, uh, there is an age limit, just so you know. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the most statistically significant baby ever, Lyra. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> At the start of that story, I said, I've just had a baby, which was true three years ago, but now is starting to sound a little bit disingenuous when I say it live on stage. Or at least it was sounding disingenuous until I've just had another baby. So while it's technically true, it's referring to a different one that I talk about in the story. The new one's called Aster. I thought you might like to see Aster because you just saw Lyra. Here he is. Honestly, what a cutie. Takes just after his sister, really chip off the old block. The other thing I should say is, on my YouTube channel, I want everything to be true all the time, or at least to the best of my knowledge. Whereas when I'm telling stories on stage, there are some embellishments and artistic licenses taken. I'll leave it up to you to figure out where the exaggerations are. But the data is real, and it's really cool to see how it fits with what we expect. You know, your contractions do get longer as you approach birth, and the standard deviation goes down. You can see that in the bunching up. You can see that the, the lengths of contractions become more regular more predictable. The reason I've told this story so many times is because it was part of a tour show that I did called Just For Graphs, which is kind of how it sounds. Uh, that's something I was doing with Helen Arnie and Matt Parker. Um, uh, we are collectively known as Festival of the Spoken Nerd, and that was our third ever tour show, which you just watched the DVD recording of. And the DVD is now available, so you can buy it. Um, if you prefer HD, then there's an HD download option as well. In fact, if you buy the DVD from Festival of the Spoken Nerd shop, you get the HD download for free. Uh, all the details are in the description there. And um, so yeah, if you like physical items and you also like lots and lots of pixels, then the DVD plus free download is the best option for you. Though if you're a real connoisseur, I recommend the VHS copy also comes with an HD download for free. Um, yeah, we got six VHS copies made, uh, which you might think is stupid, but then six people bought them. <laughs> so we've had to get some more made. They seem popular. Um, it costs a lot of money to make a DVD and we're kind of trying to recoup the costs now. So if you were to buy the DVD, uh, we're just very grateful. Um, we really appreciate your support. You know, we, we do it for the love really and the money. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. Yes, I will. I will see you there. YouTube is, it's a two way thing. If you can see me, I can see you.